Um, well, what happened was that, um, from my point of view, I was sent a book, the book that was written by Michael Nicholson, a British journalist. This was during, whilst the war was still going on. I can't remember, to be honest, exactly when it was now, but it was maybe kind of a couple of years before the war ended. And that told the story of his experience, which was that, you know, whilst he was covering the war in, in Sarajevo, he adopted a girl. And it seemed to me that that would be a kind of a starting point to look at what was happening in Sarajevo and what was happening in a way about the West's response to it or the rest of Europe's response to it. So, you know, living in Britain and growing up, you know, sort of, I, I never imagined there could be another war in Europe. The wars in Europe seem to be in the past. And then suddenly here was this kind of very bitter civil war happening. And we all seemed to be watching on TV and doing nothing, nothing about it. So it seemed to me like a TV journalist, someone who's like a representative of us. He's the kind of way in which we know what's going on. And his experiences of being there uh, and actually seeing it more directly and more intimately would be a good starting point to sort of to try and ask questions about why are we sitting around and, and not doing more to, 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 to get involved in what was happening. Well, I mean, it was, um, it was a good experience. You know, it was, a, it was an amazing experience being in Sarajevo. Uh, we, uh, the plan was to make it, you know, whatever happened. So, you know, it was just by the time we had the script, by the time we had the finance, the war had finished. It wasn't that we sort of w were waiting for the war to finish and then went to make it. Uh, but but by the as I say, by the time we had the, the kind of everything ready to make the film, I think I went there the first time about three or, f three or four weeks, maybe six weeks after the war had finished. So, you know, obviously it was, a, it was a time when, you know, you imagined everyone would be, you know, incredibly stressed and not wanting to think about something like making a film. But in fact, we had a really fantastic team of people that we worked with in, in uh, Sarajevo who were all incredibly keen to work on the film, incredibly keen to work, to work in general and to work in film in general. I think they felt it was really important to, to participate in t telling a story of what had happened, to try and get a story across. And I think also just we're glad that at last the war was over and you, normal life could resume. So actually there was a kind of sense of like a lot of energy and, and the, a sense of like people really being ha happy in a way that, that, uh, that they could start to think about the future rather than just concentrating on surviving what was going on. No, I mean it's like um, you know. I mean it's like it would be it would be a bit bad as an outsider to go into a place that just had war for three years or four years and be scared after the war had finished. You know? I mean, you know, we were obviously relatively safe. I mean, there, it was a situation where, <coughs> that, you know, there was a huge amount of mines left around. So that when we were going into areas uh, to work, we had to either clear areas or to make you know to make sure that we were only working on areas that had been cleared. So you would, you would get a lot of the kind of local crew would be like picking up mines and waving them around and showing you kind of how they work and so on. So there, there was a kind of element that, of course, there was a lot of problems still there, but um, but the situation itself, you know, didn't fe it wasn't it was really it was it was that kind of danger that you might accidentally step on something rather than the danger of someone going to shoot you. I mean, it, the, the idea was in a way to try and use the central strand of, of the British journalists as a way of seeing other little stories, so sort of like so you'd, you'd have short stories in a way, of short pi pictures of what had been going on. Uh, and I think the starting point was that, in a way, the most that we should try and use the archive where possible. I mean, because our characters, main characters were journalists, it was very easy to incorporate in our film the real archive footage of, of what had been happening. And I didn't really want to to be trying to sort of, in a fictional way, kind of create the kind of horror of it. I kind of wanted the most kind of, I wanted to, 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 to be that, obviously you want to engage with the characters, but the, 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 what is horrible is what really happened, you know, to try and always remind people this is like, this is a story about what, that, what has really, uh, what really happened and what has just been happening, you know, so that we've all, in a way that the most, you know, maybe the most powerful images are the TV archive images that we'd all seen. So it's more like a reminder, yeah, I watched that and I didn't think any about, anything about it. You know, I saw that and, we, and you know, why weren't we doing something about it? So there's quite a lot of archive in the film. We really built it around the kind of like various, you know, particular incidents and, and worked way back from that. Um, but I mean, obviously emotionally, something like the children on the bus, you know, uh, uh, when, when the sort of people are being pulled out because of, you know, of, of what their ethnic background is, you know, th those sort of stories, you know, it, it, those sort of moments, if they're strong emotionally, it's just because it is a kind of terrible thing to do, you know. So I think with the whole film, the idea was not to try and maximise emotion, but try and, like, tell these little stories and try and, rem and try and make people, you know, imagine just what the real situation would be like and that the emotion comes from what really happened rather than from anything that the actors were doing. 
Well, we, 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 I mean, with old music, you just, you know, you just choose what you feel is the best, um, you know, the best combination. But I, I mean, for me, the basic, the, the central idea was that I think during the coverage of the war, there had been quite a lot of uh, descriptions of the Balkans, the description of Bosnia, which made it seem very exotic. It kind of made it seem a place that was very different to Britain or very different to Western Europe. It was, this, you know, where people are always fighting and where there have always been this historic conflict for hundreds of years. And it seemed to me, going to Bosnia, going to Sarajevo, that just wasn't true. You know, Sarajevo was incredibly familiar, incredibly similar to, um, uh, you know, being in Rome or London. People had the same, you know, people were listening to the same music that in the cafes and bars and that. So when I went there, they were listening to Oasis and things like that. So we were like making it kind of like, we were like trying to like go back and like think what they were listening to then. And I wanted to use like a lot of Western music in general because I just wanted to make that thing that it's not this kind of weird, dark, mysterious place. It's just a city, you know, a city like the cities that we live in and that, and that, and that you know, that's what's so terrible what's happening in a way is that it's a kind of, it was a kind of war that came out of a situation where people had actually all been living together getting on in the kind of modern European situation and they still managed to get to the point of this kind of incredibly bitter civil war. Um, well, on the casting, I mean, you just try and find the people that you think are, you know, the, be the best people to work in the film. So, um, you know, I think from my point of view, once, you, once you've cast someone, in a way, that's the, most, that's the biggest part of your job over as a director. I just try and kind of create a situation where people feel comfortable and they can do what they want to do and feel relaxed and they feel that they're able to try out what they want to, how, how they want to be there. I don't want, you know, so really, you know, the choosing who you work with is the most important thing. And so people like Woody Harrelson, you know, were great and Stephen Delane and Kay Fox and that it was all fantastic. And they're, they're all kind of people whose work I knew and, they're, you know, it was great to work, get a chance to work with them and I just let them get on with it, you know. And so if, if they're good, good in the film, that's big down to them. And with Goran uh, Vizinic, it was what was nice is that he hadn't really done that, that much filming at the time. And uh, he was quite a well-known actor in the theatre, but, you know, he was very young. Very young. So it was really lovely that he, um, he was, you know, he kind of worked on that and was like, you know, and then went on to his nice big career in America. So, you know, so, so obviously when you work with people who haven't done so much, it's like, it's, you know, it's even more satisfying. But, um, but really, it was just a question of like picking people that were uh, were good at their job, really. And I think you know, everyone who did the film, you know, it was quite they were, the working conditions were quite difficult in some ways. And so I think everyone who did the film did it because they really wanted to really wanted to be part of it. So it was a really good atmosphere on set.